Hello everyone, my name is Sharos Tai. I am a PhD student at Dash Lab in Sungkyung Wan University, South Korea. I am interested in defect detection, privacy and security issues in AI. I will present our paper on defect det uh, one detector to rule them all toward a general defect attack detection framework. This paper is written in collaboration with Sangya Lee and Simon Wu. I think most of you might already know what defects are, but for those who do not know, defects are synthetic media in which a person in an existing image or video is replaced with someone's, uh, someone else. We can divide defects into two major categories. The first one is identity swap. There are some part uh, where some part of target target's entire face are swapped with the source face, as shown in figure on the right. The second one is facial reenactment. Here, a source video is used to drive the victim's facial expression, gaze, mouth, and pose in a target video or image. Two examples of facial reenactment are shown on, on the bottom right-hand side. Now let's talk about the general defect detection pipeline as observed in recent research articles. Usually, we have a data set that contains real and defect videos. These defect videos are used to train defect detector, mostly a binary classifier. Once fully trained, the defect detector can accurately classify new images provided during the testing phase. We also observed that most detectors demonstrate high performance on these uh, data sets. Uh, we will discuss this later, uh, this after a few slides. Before that, I want to make you familiar with some of the famous defect, defect benchmark datasets from past few years. The reenactment based defect dataset includes face to face and neural textures. The face swap based defect dataset includes defect, face swap, defect detection dataset from Google, and defect detection challenge dataset from Facebook. Now let's go back to the performance of defect detectors when trained and tested on a single type of defect dataset. We did not this scenario as in-domain attack. I will discuss the attack more later in my presentation. This experiment can be thought of as a general evaluation scenario in nearly all defect, defect detection papers. For example, the model trained on defect dataset evaluated with the DF dataset demonstrate exceptional performance. We can observe similar results for all such scenarios. However, when same models are evaluated with defect videos from other data sets, they all fail. For example, when a defect detector trained on a face-to-face -face data set, here denoted by F2F, is tested with some other defect, with some different defect data sets such as DF, FS, DFT, NT, or DFW. Their performance dropped from 99% to 50%. This is the probability of coin flipping. This means that detector is randomly selecting real and fake for, for other data sets when evaluated. This is a significant obstacle for defect detectors to be deployed in real world systems. This takes us to the motivation of this work. The state of the art defect detectors lack generalization capabilities. Hence, they are useless in real-world systems. Because in practical scenarios, we will never know for sure without any prior knowledge which defect generation method is used to develop a particular defect. Therefore, we propose several training strategies and compare them to find which one provides the best generalization capabilities. Also, in our literature review, we find that not many defect detectors exploit the temporal information in defect videos and they mainly focus on spatial data. And single frame-based methods are dominant. Whereas in our preliminary experiment, we find that sometimes in defect videos, there are inconsistencies between video frames. Therefore, we propose a method that can exploit both spatial and temporal information in videos for defect detection. The figure at the bottom highlights this aspect, where the left one is the end and and plus one frame of the real video and right one is of defect video. Subfigure C shows the sudden change in two frames, which is usually not present in real videos. The main contribution of, of, our, of our work are, firstly, we propose a convolutional LSTM based 
as a dual network, which is a novel architecture. It can leverage spatial and temporal information from consecutive frames of defect videos. Secondly, we show empirical analysis of different training strategies that can use uh, that can be used for generalizability for providing generalizability. And lastly, we evaluate the proposed method on defect in our data set of 200 videos. Collected 200 non pornographic defect videos from the internet. These videos contain defects of celebrities generated by methods, uh, different me defect methods, famous movie characters replaced by other celebrities, or reenactment videos of prominent political figures. It is to note that we tried our best to follow all ethical standards, and we provide an extensive ethical concern subsection in the discussion section of our paper. In this paper, we perform another high-level categorization of defect datasets. This categorization is based on our knowledge about the generation methods of defect videos. Therefore, all the benchmark datasets are categorized into known and uh, de-known. The defect in the wild dataset is categorized into de-unknown, where unknown may contain known and unknown generation methods. Now let's talk about the threat model and types of attacks. In our threat model, we consider three types of attackers. The first one is the in-domain attacker. In this attack, the same type of defects are used to attack or test the defect detectors as the training data set. Therefore, defect detectors primarily provide good performance. The second one is out-of-domain attacker. In this attack, the attacker shows strictly uh, attacker, the attacker uses strictly those type of defects which are not used in training as shown in the middle part of the figure at the top. The third one is open domain attacker. In this attack, the attacker randomly uses defect videos from the internet to test the defect detector. This attack may contain a mix of known and unknown generation methods. However, we cannot easily find the exact distribution. This attack is more practical and translate well to real world scenarios. These are some example scenarios of different def different attacks from in domain, out domain, out of domain, and open domain attackers. Here, DA is the attack data set and DT is the training data set. We also evaluate many other scenarios and details are provided on our GitHub code and also inside the Jupyter notebooks. Now I'll provide a slight overview of convolutional LSTM cells. If you know enough about LSTM, then it is it is straightforward as we replace the internal matrix multiplication with convolutional operations, as shown in this figure, where XT is the input, CT is the output, HT is the hidden state, IT, FT, and OT are the gates. There is a common misconception that convolutional LSTM is the same as CNN plus LSTM, but it is not. Uh, this is the architecture of our convolutional LSTM-based residual network. The input to the model is a sequence of consecutive images. The output is the classification results about the set of images being real or defect. In this architecture diagram, we use Keras terminologies for naming the layers. Now I will explain different training strategies used in our analysis. The first, tra first strategy is single domain learning. This is a typical training process. One data set, for example, face-to-face -face donated as FS is used to train the model. The second strategy is merge learning. In this strategy, we aggregate two or more data sets. For example, in this figure, we aggregate all known, uh, all known data sets and then train the classifier. The third strategy is transfer learning where we use one, D, one data set to train the model as we do in single domain learning. Then this model is used to perform transfer learning to the target class as shown in this figure. The transfer learning requires fewer data samples and time as compared to much learning. More on this will be in the results section. For experiment, we use five benchmark defect data sets and one defect in the wild data set collected by us. A defect in the wild dataset is only used for evaluation. We compare two types of baseline. 
First is multi-frame based method similar to RCLR net. Second is single frame based method such as shallow net, exception net, and meso net. For transfer learning, instead of using just target domain videos, we utilize 10 videos from source and 10 from target domains. This helps in generalization. This is a recap of the result from the in-domain attack. As I described earlier, all detectors perform well against the in-domain attack. And this is the recap of, re of results from out-of-domain attack. And uh, as I described earlier, all the detector fail to detect all out-of-domain defects. Therefore, we applied our defense strategies by applying merge learning and transfer learning strategies. We can observe that the detection performance against out-of-domain attack has improved significantly. Now let's compare merge learning and transfer learning. The data used by merge learning is around four times more than transfer learning. Therefore, it takes uh, it takes uh, nearly four it takes and the time it takes to complete one epoch is uh, four times higher for merge learning as compared to transfer learning whereas using fewer data uh, whereas while using fewer data samples and consuming less time transfer learning performs better than merge learning on average we also compared all strategies for open domain attacks we can see that transfer learning is also the best for defect in the wild data set also, we observed that on an arbitrary selection of source and target for transfer learning, it performed 93.86% accuracy. Where the, where the near best solution obtained using the uh, restricted grid search algorithm provides 95.92% accuracy on open domain attack. Therefore, choosing the type of defect for performing the base training or single domain training in transfer learning does not significantly impact the performance. Here we provide a class activation map from different type of defects. For DF, FS, TFT, and FS, F2F, the activations are concentrated around the nodes region. Whereas for NT, it is randomly distributed except for the nodes region. For defect in the wild dataset, it differs for each video. Sometimes it's like the first case, and sometimes it's like the second case, and some contain a mix of both. This also indicates that DFW dataset in includes a mix of different DFIG methods. In conclusion, I would like to summarize. We propose convolutional LSTM based residual network named CLRNet. We find that spatial as well as temporal information is necessary to build a state of the art DFIG detector. After empirical analysis, we conclude that transfer learning strategy using both source and target provides the best generalization. The result on defect in the wild dataset also support this claim. We believe that it is a constant arm race and better defect generation method will be developed in the future. Therefore, we have to keep improving the defect detectors accordingly. These are some of the references uh, I used to make this presentation. And thank you for listening.